I'm sorry. Are you blind? Are you excited? Yes and no. <laughs> Love you. Are you gonna be a mommy? I hope it's a good scan. I have no idea. Yeah, this is exactly what happened to Mama Red. Hey, honey. Are you alright? Good morning. I'm just looking at Jess's Jeep. I'm not gonna see it after today for a while. So yes, our girl is healed up after a less than ideal year and uh, she heads back to Guelph today. So I've got a couple things I need to do at the barn this morning and then I wanna sort of block some time this afternoon so I can send her off and then wallow in my self-pity for a little while after that. <laughs> it's gonna be hard because uh, Jess and I have sort of rekindled, bonded as parent, as mother-daughter, because once you say goodbye to them and they go off to school, it's like we're empty nesters, we have our whole life ahead of us as a married couple, and then cancer knocks at your door and changes your plans. So uh, as much as I've loved having her home, I am so thankful she is in remission and we can put this whole ordeal behind us and she can go live her life like every other 20 year old, 21 year old seems to be able to do. So wishing her all the best. I'm sure all of you wish her all the best. You can always catch her on YouTube. She has her own channel. She's a bit of a bookworm. She also does vlogs. So we'll see what she does once she goes back to school. She said vlogging is a little harder at school because her walls are paper thin. So she's like, it's a little embarrassing talking to my camera when my uh, next door neighbor can hear me. Anyway, we've got a few things happening this week in the barn. And today being Sunday, I wanted to sort of prep for it. And Carissa also said a you that we've been struggling with, she's got mastitis. I've treated her three times and it usually only takes one time to treat these ladies. She said she's not getting up this morning. So that is not a good sign. <laughs> How's she doing, Piper? Can you take her temp for me? So it's already starting to sort of, I know, honey, starting to sort of go gangrene. Hey, no. So that's, that is what we're dealing with. That's not ideal for an udder. Not ideal at all. She has been treated three times, haven't you, honey? I'm sorry. Can you get up or you still have it? You want your own pen, maybe? You want your own pen? I'm just afraid you won't get up.
wake up. Barely. Yeah, not ideal. Um, once it starts going sort of purple like that, it means it's dying, that part of the udder. They are producing quite a bit of milk, some of these ewes, and I'm wondering if the lambs, I know for a fact, there's a couple ewes in here, that the lambs are drinking only out of one side, and it's killing their other side. So, some of these ewes, I'm looking back and I'm like, I wish I left three on them. But you know, you don't know. You don't know when you're pulling them off that this is a ewe that's gonna produce a ton of milk, and she needs three, so the one side will definitely get serviced. You just assume with two, healthy babies, they're gonna service both sides. It's just frustrating because, like, why aren't they drinking out of that side? Oh. The other thing I noticed the other day when my sister was here is I was showing off my little bottle lamb, my warm room baby, that one. And uh, I said to her, does his eye look foggy to you? She goes, yeah, and I'm like, uh, which could be like a form of pink eye or a virus. And I've had it before, and usually penicillin sort of does wonders. So I treated him on, when were they here? Friday. Treat him on Friday, today's Sunday. So I might treat him again. And I also want to give them all, all three of them, their clostridial antitoxin. So then I can let them out and they can be with these guys and then they can eat some creep as well. Hi. Hi. Hi, Bubby. Hi. How's me baby? Well, I think it's coming. I think it's coming. I don't know if you can see this eye or if it's blurry. You're getting heavy. Do you see how it's sort of foggy? Now, I think it's get looking a little better. Hi, buddy. Can I see your eyeball? Oh, it's still pretty fuzzy. This one looks okay. That one looks foggy. Oh. I don't know. Maybe you can't see anything. Maybe that's why it's so responsive to my voice this whole time. Well, you're blind. Have you been blind this whole time? I don't think so. I think I would have noticed. Okay, let's vaccinate you guys and let you get with the general public. Since I vaccinated those guys and painted them with a green dot, I'm gonna vaccinate these guys and paint them with a red, so I know that these guys are gonna be done um, a little later than these ones. I know. Cool. Please let me have enough for these three. There we go. Am I a muffin? Give me a muffin. I know, I know. There we go. I done. So a big thing's happening tomorrow. We're gonna find out if Willow and her bestie Red are indeed gonna have some babies in April. I think April 1st is the due date for this group. So Rex is coming in the morning. Carissa has a funeral she has to go to. So what I thought I would do is actually rip apart and get this handling system all ready so that if anything happens in the morning, this thing takes time to sort of set up for him because he uses 
only part of my handling system. So I have to get all this torn down and even that uh, ramp needs taken off and it is not the funnest thing. It's actually not bad taking off, it's worse putting back on. So I'll probably use the loader to do that, but yeah. That's the last thing sort of pressing in the barn today in this barn. And then I gotta go across the road and make sure my water is still thawed. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> There's the tail wag. Hey, sweetie, you're a sweetheart too. Yeah. My sweetie. Yeah. Where'd Red go? Red, why are you being a snoot? Come here. Come here. Come say hi. Yeah. All right, I just want to check my water lines. See if my heat cords are working, except for today's not as cold. Oh, that feels warm. Okay, well that one was working yesterday, so that's not an accomplishment. You're not on. You're not on. Oh. <laughs> All right, well they're not gonna be on when the water's thawed. Now I don't know what temp these actually turn on, that's the thing. Good. Well, I think we're good for today. It's a cat pee. We'll see how the Golden Girls are faring. See if they're in the new pen. Yesterday they weren't. Aww. That's nice. I think they like it. You like that, Marge? It's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I own a lot of stuff, apparently. Well, you've been here for a good part of the year. Seven months, eight months. I don't know, something like that. You excited? Yes and no. <laughs> Yes and no. Okay, I'll give you a hand. Thanks. My TV first. I gotta put it in that. My baby girl is gone, probably already back at school. I took a long walk with the dogs back to the cabin, and then I proceeded to open up my book and fall asleep for half an hour. So I'm like, oh, better go back to the house. I have laundry, I have groceries I gotta get, I gotta, I gotta do a bunch of stuff. Yesterday, 
if you watched the last vlog, uh, I went on a date with Mark. And I remember telling you guys that uh, I love wool. I love wool in the winter. I love wearing wool. Like I thought I would show you what I wear under my gear. I know you guys see me and I look like a, I look like the Michelin man. Mark usually gives me long underwear <laughs> for Christmas. I usually ask for it. Uh, so I think these are icebreaker. I think icebreakers in New Zealand or Australia. And I think the top is like just, uh, we have a store here called Mountain Equipment Co-op. And I think it's Canadian, I'm not really sure, but they carry all these brands. They're expensive, but I only wear it in the winter and I only wear it under my gear. So I wear it snowmobiling if I go snowmobiling. I'll wear it hiking if I go hiking in the winter, in the bush. I'll wear it if we're like cutting wood out there and I wanna wear it more when I'm doing chores. So yesterday I did get a little bit of a haul. Um, I'm sort of a smart wool sock uh, snob, if you will. And the only reason I got into these, besides my husband who is a wool snob as well, is I got these given to me by a viewer. So I got, I'm pretty smart, I get like two of the same colors because my socks tend to disappear. Uh, so I got these two sort of blends. They have fun, fun colors. I always get the high full cushion socks. I like them heavy for the winter in my boots. My boots run a bit big, so I like having pretty thick socks. And then these were on sale. So again, this is the company, Mountain Equipment Company. What is it called? Merino T3 Base Layer. Show yourself, come on. And I got a purple top to match. And they were on sale. They're still really expensive. Um, and it's literally long underwear, but my mish this winter is to only have to wear this stuff under my coveralls, and I'm gonna see if I stay warm. Um, when I layer too much, I just, I find I can't move very well. And that's when I start tripping over gates and tripping over my feet and all the things that Sandy does that I just like to blame on other things. It just might be because I'm clumsy. I'm just procrastinating because I have to go get groceries and I saw them sitting on my dresser. I'm like, oh, I better show you guys what I got because I told you I was gonna get some wool stuff. Someone's missing her mommy. You missing your mom? Go say hi to your mom and say why did you leave me? Good morning. Today is the day. We get to find out if my sweet Willow and her bestie are gonna be mommies. There's actually three in this pen that are sort of besties. Willow, Red, and there's this sweet little white one. And they're always together until you come around. So Rex is gonna be here soon, and I've got pretty much everything set up for him, ready to go. I just need to put on some gates and get the center alley sort of ready for the, uh, the ones that go through. I'm excited. I hope it's a good scan, I have no idea. These guys were in their natural breeding um, season, so it should be decent, but I just never know. I didn't give them PMSG, but I did cedar this group, so. Uh, they were synchronized, so we'll see. Scan day for me is really uh, like a report card, so I typically just get very, very nervous. It's like exam day. We've already got a hat. Just one. Oh, we got that mat. I should have pulled ahead. Next one. Oh, my God. 
does. Oh yeah. I think we had a good scan you guys uh we either have four or five open i think it was five and rex thought it was four uh so that's really good i'm just gonna put them back in their pen and then go have some lunch where do you want to go let's go right there So I think I only counted four red paint stripes and red paint stripes means they're open. Uh, so that is pretty amazing. Uh, if my numbers are right, I think there's 90 in this group. So uh, four opens would suggest I have like a 95% uh, conception rate, which is amazing. So well done ladies. And red is going to be a mommy. And Willow's going to be a mommy. That's amazing. I think actually two that were open were open last time. So those are sort of automatics. If they miss twice, then uh, they get sold. Now it won't snow. I think it's supposed to rain a fair bit. When? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Mark and I are heading out for uh, to run a couple errands and one of them is to see Belinda. I want to get that hay feeder and uh, fun fact, I got her a Christmas present this year, right here. And um, <laughs> when I was uh, finding my wrapping paper, I found her present from last year. So she's getting Christmas 22 and Christmas 23 today. <laughs> I have been watching my view. She's laying down right there. She's reminding me of uh, Red. She had the same thing. She went down, it took me a long time to get her back up. What I did is I treated her very much like Preg Talk. So calcium, glycol, I'm gonna feed and water her right in spot there. I have a little lamb choking on her feed. Get it out. So anyway, I'm gonna try it. It's the sort of last resort, but it worked with Red, so fingers crossed.
She's already been treated. She got treated yesterday with painkiller and antibiotic. So she's good on that, on that end, but she needs water, at least introduced. And uh, I'll see if she'll eat a little bit of feed. Okay, well that makes me feel a little better. She's on her own now. She doesn't really seem interested in eating and drinking. But she can move a bit, so I put her water just against the bunk here. I don't want it to get knocked over. And there's feet in front of her. I don't know which ones her babies are. <laughs> um, there is a way for them to come in and into her pen if they're desperate. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna have to sort of rely on them coming and talking to her, and then I can grab them and put them with her, hopefully. Yeah, this is exactly what happened to Mama Red back in the day. It took me a long time to get her up, <laughs> so. Uh. Hey, honey. Are you all right? You haven't got up yet. Let's go get her up once and for all. That's right where I left you, but you were standing. 